right, here we go. I'm gonna run some tests on my uh, swash pellets and servos. Uh, I've attempted to take it up twice already last night. Uh, of course, I don't got any LD LEDs yet, so that was kind of stupid. But um, it kept tilting to the right a lot. Um, I've read online that it's better to take off quick than slowly pulling up uh, because sometimes the uh, gyro tends to get confused if it's too long on the ground as it's coming up and tries to overcompensate and uh, cause that tilt. So I'm going to try a harder hit um, next time. But before that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, finally got my throttle kill switch in here. Throttle hold. I got it set and ready to go. So I'm going to test it real quick to make sure I can take a look at the servos, take a look at everything without this thing turning on. So I'm going to go ahead and bind it real quick. Uh, and uh, you know what? I'll cover the binding. If anyone has the, um, the Wakara... Uh, V450 D01 or D03 uh, the correct and quick way to bind this if you haven't set the fixed IP for it that fixed ID is to first turn on make sure you, this is all the way down make sure all your buttons are in the off position and turn on your transmitter first then you go ahead and uh, I mean your plug in the, uh, the heli so we got the little light blinking. Give it a couple of seconds. There it is. So they're married. So right now, just to do a quick test. Moves. So now if I accelerate, this thing is gonna spin, it's gonna hurt me. So you're gonna notice, take a look at the um, at the blades. The second I hit the uh, the, um, the kill switch, the uh, throttle hold, the blades are going to flip down it's going to like a rabbit with uh, floppy ears because when you do that it now turns to completely um, uh, throttle hold and then this here takes over and uh, at, at the angle that it's in the pitch is completely uh, down so watch this see that <laughs> so that means that the motor is dead and now um, since the transmitter is all the way at the bottom to adjust this you actually raise it like if you're accelerating and the servos will kick in and compensate. So right now this is technically zero. So if you were in stop mode one or stop mode two, center throttle is zero. And that's where your um, um, your gyros are, I mean your, ah, lost for words today, your servos are keeping it at. So as I bring down the, uh, the throttle, you'll notice that the center of the swash plate raises or lowers, changing the uh, the pitch of the blades. So this means that the blades are bending down, and you're going to go up really, really fast. This means that the uh, come on, stay there. This is zero, and this means you're really going to go down fast and hit the ground, or for inverted flying. So that's what allows you to fly inverted when you have this thing flipped upside down. Uh, let me go ahead and put it up you can see these blades actually changing pitch like this is what catches the wind kind of like how a fan works the you know, fans are not completely flat they're actually uh, bent a little so they blow air so in this case the air is being blown down as the pitch changes now that it's flat it's not blowing air up or down and as the pitch goes up now the air is being blown opposite is being blown up so if you're very high and this thing is, is going to shoot you straight down. If you're inverted, it's going to keep you off the ground. So, this should be zero right there. All right. Looks like it's working fine. I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, left and right here. Okay, that's my tail. Let's go take a look at it. Let's go back here. There's my tail left and right. Seems to be working good. So, again, the rudder left and right. What controls the tail and again just like anything else flat it's not doing anything this way it's going to blow air that way this way, i mean this way it's going to blow air that way this way it's going to blow air this way all right that seems all fine um let me see these let me look at the uh the swash plate from the front here real quick looks fine looks completely straight to me arms look okay 
don't know why it's that little pool. And again, it could just be that. It could just be that the um. Well, this is completely level, so I'm okay there. It could just be that the gyro is getting confused. It's on the ground too long and it's trying to overcompensate uh, with the tilt. So, I mean, overall, I checked all the screws. I checked the connector. I checked everything. Everything seems fine here. I don't see any issues. Same with the pitch. Seems fine. Tail seems fine. I don't know. But I guess I'm going to give it a whirl and see what it does. Hmm, there's a little cable in there. You know what? I'm going to check that little, this little cable getting touched a little bit there. I don't know if you noticed that. Uh, I'm going to move that cable around just to be exact. All right. So, and again, for safety purposes, don't just turn off the, the receiver, um, the transmitter, because the head can get confused, try to pick up a signal from something else, and just take off and destroy it. So, prior to turning that off, unplug this. Kill the power completely. Lower this. Put back your, throw the hold off. And then shut, shut off your transmitter. Never, never, never turn that off first. I don't know why, but I've seen too much problems in the past with the transmitter turning off first. And then the receiver and this thing going, oh shit. And then just going crazy, so. All right, well, hope that helps. Anyone else who owns this model, um, I made the mistake. I uh, hope you don't do it either. Where when I'm flying, I kept my fingers down here, and then I'm I'm there. I'm like you know I'm, I'm about to take off. I'm you know uh, I was like okay everything's perfect. I had my my throttle about like there, and as I was decided to land completely, my finger slipped and I hit this into stop mode one. Well, what happened? The RPMs were at the possible lowest here, and when you flick on mode one, your RPMs just shoot up to about 75 percent or higher. Well, in this case. It was more like 90% because when you want when you run stump mode one and stump mode two, you're at 75% right here, 100% here, 100% here. So if you're at 20% on normal mode and then you flick off to uh, stump mode, what's going to happen is that the pitch is going to automatically shift down, like if you want to land, and it's going to hit from 20% to 75%. Well, these are plastic servos and. I mean these are plastic gears and I was lucky that I had this plastic gear because what it did on mine is it just completely stripped it out. It made it bald and blue confetti flying everywhere. Which I'm glad it did that because the alternative would have been kicking it high and it maybe would have tilted over, maybe something would have got damaged. So that's the only good thing about this. The bad part about that is if you're doing some pretty heavy stunts and you do jump back and forth, you know, my strip a little easy. Uh, some people go and change these to like something a little tougher. Um, I would never go with metal gears. I'd rather have this thing strip and I get a minor accident than anything else. Um, and then if I see this thing going down and I know I have no control over anything, you know, I just hit my little emergency throttle hold switch, motor cuts off, and when it hits the ground, what breaks, what breaks, but at least that this thing is still not spinning. Because most of the damage when you get into a crash is when you hit the ground and you're accelerating, trying to compensate, trying to get back up, trying to avoid hitting. And, when, and, the, and then you smash on the ground and then this thing still keeps going and it starts ripping up all the blades, it starts ripping up everything, destroying your servo arms and you know, you're better off just, hey, complete that and just, you know, pray nothing happens. And then when you hit the ground, obviously, I don't know if you've been told before, but the very first, first thing you need to do, pull off this battery, toss it, toss it. You don't know if this battery got damaged, you don't know if battery got hit, so get it away from the, the heli. Then, you know, give it a couple of minutes and then go check and make sure if the battery got damaged. Because remember, these are LiPo. Um, it's a liquid-based polymer inside. It's not like lithium-ion. There's just a liquid in here. That's why these things are um, can give you a good even amount of burst. Um, that's why these things end up swelling up when you, over, when you overuse them. I tend to use a... Let me flip this over so you can see here. I tend to use a battery alarm. You know, I just keep it connected in here. I use a uh, little Velcro to keep it on there. And I simply just connect it. And I can see it um, at night pretty good. And in the daytime, it's pretty loud. Go ahead and plug it in there. Uh, I think negative is down. So in this case, this tells me this is three cells. And then it would just monitor it. And prior to this thing starts beeping, the lights start turning red. 
I mean, in the daytime, you're not going to see, especially if it's behind the canopy. But at night, this thing actually caused the whole canopy to glow pretty decent. Um, but I'm getting the, all the LED lights anyways. I'm going to, uh, the fiber optics, I'm going to wrap them on the legs. And I got the, I think, two greens and one red. So I might wrap this way, wrap this way around the canopy a little bit maybe. And then down the tail to the end. Uh, then eventually get the uh, the night blades uh, for the top. So let's see. I'm gonna I'm waiting for some additional parts to come in. Uh, I'm gonna put in the telemetry module. Um, and for right now, I'm gonna check that little cable. That I don't think it's a problem, but I'd rather be safe than sorry and double check it. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video.